What's going on YouTube? Uberman here and today we're going to be looking at a car that I almost bought that would have been too good to be true. We're going to be looking at a 2012 Suzuki SX4 LE with 40 some thousand miles, a clean title, a pretty clean body, and a weird disclosure on the auction that stated frame damage. Well, how does a car with a clean title have frame damage? Very confusing, and it almost got me. Luckily, I got the better of it. We're going to go through looking for frame damage right now. I'm looking at a 2012 Suzuki SX4 LE. This particular car is 40,000 miles on the odometer. And what's interesting about it is this car has a clean title. Um, this is not a salvage car, although this is an interesting one show you what we got going on back here the car is listed as frame damaged and if you look right here you can see <laughs> there's damage and if you look real closely at the paint you can see this is body filler you can see the pitting all over it all right now when you step back from it it looks great you see we have a crack in the body filler right here. This is typical for people that rush through a job. You can see, well maybe you can't see, but it doesn't quite, the body lines aren't quite right. Now on the back, there's no damage back here at all. Very interesting. When you come over here, you can see where they punched holes and uh, pulled the dents before using body filler. You come over to this side, and this side is straight. No issues over here at all. Now, we've got a lot of parts in here. Um, I don't want to lose them because I may win this car and I may need some of these parts. But you can look down here in the trunk pan. This is a great place to look for body damage. And you don't see any. There's no wrinkling down here at all. So it almost would appear that this car was hit right here on this corner at some point you got a crack in a body seam right here so this car was hit somewhere over here which caused damage here now here's the thing it's listed as frame damage but when you climb under the car this is the frame rail for the rear no damage same with the other side no damage to the frame rail. Now we move to the front. And you can see this car was in a front end accident as well. We've got some tweaking right here. Let's see if I can clean that up a little bit. We got some tweaking here. We got some shoddy uh, fabrication done here. Move over here. You can see we again have some tweaking. You can see we've got some tweaking over here. Nothing significant though. Nothing that appears significant, especially when we get down here. Everything looks pretty good and pretty straight for the most part. And here is a. Uh, Here's one of the frame rails for the front right here. It's not wrinkled at all. Frame rail looks good. Same thing over here. Here's another frame rail. Looks good. Now, I've checked underneath both sides of the car, and although it's very apparent that it's had front end and rear end damage and work, uh, the body lines aren't bad. This paint right here didn't get done very well. You've got a blemish right there. But overall, body lines look pretty damn good. So, you know, and of course we've got the bumper in the back seat, which I hate when they do that. But, uh, the back bumper 
appears to be in pretty good shape usable the interior is nice jerks we've got a motor mount problem somewhere that's worth looking into so I ended up cutting the video off a little bit early because I was baffled by this and I just couldn't properly look at the car with my camera in my hand plus we got the Copart drivers driving around that makes me a little leery I don't want to get booted from the auto auction but that jerking every time you put the thing in gear it would just jerk now typically that seems like a motor mount but this wasn't just a a quick jerk and it's done this was you put it in reverse and it was whoa 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 it was like a reverb you know just it was very strange put it in reverse same thing jerk 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 jerk, jerk. put it in drive jerk 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 never have I experienced anything like this before so I keep screwing with it and I finally 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 get up under it enough to where i can see the frame of the car is not damaged but the cradle that holds the engine in the transmission has snapped so the engine literally while it was running was just sitting there bouncing on the cradle because part of the cradle that supports it had broken just snapped the engine just this is a case of where quite literally you could be driving down the highway and the engine, if that, if that piece breaks or bows anymore, the engine could come in contact with the ground. This is very dangerous. Needless to say, uh, I did bid on it because you can replace the cradle. Um, I could find an entire cradle or subframe um, for this thing for probably $250. It's a lot of work to change. But on a car with 40-something thousand miles, this was a job I was willing to take on. I bid it up to I don't know what, but it ended up selling for something like $1,900 plus co-part fees. You're probably looking about another five or $600. It, it just wasn't worth it. Um, the price of the car plus having a designation of frame damage, but yet having a clear title. The Bondo work was shoddy. The paint job was shoddy. The, the work on the hood was not good. The tweaking of the front core support overall... I could have made this a decent car, but this is a car I should have stayed away from, and, and I'm absolutely glad that I did, and I kind of feel sorry for whoever won that car, because when they get it, they're going to realize real quick that there is so much more work that needs to go into this thing, and it's not worth it. So, blah, 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 I could ramble on all day about cars, because this is something I really love, but I hope this video found you in good spirits and good health, and I hope that you learned something from this. You should always, whenever possible, Look for damage, damage to the front frame rails, damage to the frame rails underneath the back end like I showed you, uh, pulling up the trunk pan just like where the spare tire would go, looking for crumples or crinkles, crumples, <laughs> I'm not editing getting out, you know, looking for wrinkles in the sheet metal of the floor pan of the trunk, and if you can get away with it on a test drive or something, pull the carpet away from the sides and look through the sides of the trunk and see, do you, do you see anything wrinkled up in there? Do you see holes that have been punched? because that means you've got a, a pretty a pretty shoddy Bondo job, most likely. And, uh, you know, that's the purpose of this video series, to help keep you from losing money on a lemon. Um, so hopefully this video was uh, something that helped you, because honestly, after I looked at the car, I was like, I'm not even going to do a video about it. But then I was like, this video could actually help someone and prevent someone from wasting their money you know, on a dud when they could be out spending their money on a good car from me. So that's it for the video. Thank you all for watching. As always, like, comment, please, please, thumbs up. That's that like part. And and please subscribe. I really appreciate your subscription. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I look forward to seeing you soon.